Hey, welcome to the Road and Morale podcast. So do you ever feel like screaming out in the office on Zoom or outside the school gate? For the love of God, come on, really? And if this is you and you're looking for an honest, fun and frank podcast on life and business, then sit back and listen to me, Rona Morel. I'll be bringing great people on the show to talk, share and debate their life experiences and business challenges. Keeping the show unpolished, but in a fun and unique British style. With sarcasm, tenacity, or maybe a few swear words or tears. This podcast keeps it real, honest, raw, and removes the bullshit in the only way I know how. Through authenticity and getting shit done. Think of it less like the housewives of New York or Towie with the life and drama, and more like the house and lives of the real world. I hope you'll take something away to be better informed, laugh, smile, or maybe even finally get in the confidence to shout, come on really. So enjoy. Hey, hi Alana, hi Dean, welcome to the Road and Roll podcast. Thank you. How are you? I'm really well, thank you. Really good. Um, guys, so I, I'm delighted to welcome back Dean. So anyone who remembers my, my first podcast with Dean Starr. And um, as we spoke in that episode, we talked a lot about um, teamwork and actually Alana. And I, I said at the time, right, we need be, the brains behind the operation. And I would love to interview uh, Alana as well. So this is the fabulous Alana Stott, who... Um, is married to Dean and they both moved to California this year. Now we will hear more about Alana on next week's podcast. Um, I had the pleasure of uh, meeting Alana and Pamela on Women Do Wonders so we'll touch on all of that next week but what I would um, like to kind of talk about today and, and this, this couple amaze me so they really are a power couple and I think a lot of what Dean has done in his history would not have been possible at any stage without the, the management, the education, the passion, the drive of having Alana um, behind you. And I know both of you have dealt with piracy, kidnapping, corruption, and that's probably just from the kids. <laughs> but on a serious <laughs> note, you do work in that world. So it's not um, a light career to, to choose. So you know, welcome back, Dean, and, and a massive welcome, Alana. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, so, yeah, let's let's dive in. Alana, you clearly um, are the passion behind a lot of what Dean does in terms of organising and that teamwork. How does it work with you guys? And, you know, we, we see Dean, we, we know you've got the book and we'll talk about that later, but how, how do you guys work together? And well, I think really early on, it was, but when I met Dean, he was still in the special forces. So I was a bank manager. So I was literally career, career, career. That was all I, I done was work. Um, and then Dean had happened to be in Aberdeen. We happened to meet and he was a soldier. So he lived this kind of soldier life this way all the time. We, we got together and then um, our lives were really, really different, but I was quickly introduced to the, the military wife community, I think, that, and which mm. it is a really interesting community because the, 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 the way that the guys have to work, the women have to pretty much adjust to whatever they're, they're doing. And, and, and it doesn't matter if you're in a high profile job or if you're a housewife, which are both equally as important, you've got to adjust that world. So I think when I seen that world, I was like, oh, I don't know if I would be able to adapt to that but you know I gave it a go and then um you know we both when Dean got injured and then we went into um close protection together I quickly fell pregnant so I was a, a mum quite um early on working to- on the close protection too much there though clearly yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so we yeah exactly um and then we, we we had Molly and then I think it was about I remember it was the Olympics 2012. Dean was doing, um, he was doing protection work for Visa. Mm. And I'd taken Molly down to London to, to, to see him go and see one of the, we went to the boxing. And I remember just stood looking into the, the ocean in Cornwall. We'd be taking a trip down and I just went, where am I? What, what, where, where have I gone? What, you know, I, I, like yeah. my whole life had completely changed. And I'd adapted to Dean's world. I'd become this mom. I'd lost my career. I was everything I thought. Right, well, I could either stay like this and stay feeling in this lost kind of ocean, or I can I can build up my own thing. So we, we started working together a lot more. And once we started working together and realizing actually 
Dean, you're not that great at that, but Alana, you're really good at that. And Alana, you're not so good with that bit, but Dean, you're really good at that bit. So it's taken us 11 years to kind of be able to go, no, that's Dean's work. No, that's Alana's work. But now, now we've brought them both together and it works mm. really, really well. So we were lucky in that sense that we took a lot of communication. I think there was, there was a point in our, our time where we did hit kind of points where we were like, is this how it should be? Yeah. And it was, I think, the one point that we did really come to a crossroads, the pair of us just took a couple of bottles of port, a couple of glasses, and we just sat at a table. And we sat there all night till the sunrise, talking, talking, talking. I think from that point, we just never stopped talking. And Amazing. that's how our relationship yeah. stayed. I, I, I think, Alan, is, you know, going back slightly, you know, when I left the military, you know, when I was in the military, I used to see, you know, the guys. And, and for us, we, we just... It's a bit selfish, but we need to concentrate on what we're doing. We tend to forget what's going on at home, and the wives always always cover that. You know, they're the heroes behind the scenes. And when I then left, you know, obviously I got injured, so I didn't plan on leaving the military. I see people's transitions be quite turbulent and quite smooth. Um, those that are quite turbulent, you tend to look at them and identify people that are struggling when they're getting out. Their support network around them, as in their close family isn't a strong a strong unit and and I, I i sort of get it as well you know the wife's been there for 22 years supporting you you've then left the military it's almost like well that's behind you now and so that support network isn't always there thankfully for me alana she touched on she was a bank manager all those worries i had when i was getting out of the military about you know setting up a company alana said set up our first security company on a blackberry watching these tenders you know for me that's like <laughs> <laughs> I picked the right boxes. So straight away, I knew that Alana had strengths that I, I didn't have. And as Alana then touched on, you know, we went into close protection. And she, I remember someone saying, actually, when Alana and I set up the company together, it said, you know, husband and wife doesn't work. It just doesn't work when it comes to business, you know. Um, so I sort of ignored him anyway, because everyone's unique. I always say yeah. that, you know. But everyone, everyone's different. We were told that we couldn't travel when we had kids. You know, they've been all around the world about three times. <laughs> so it depends, you know, how you adapt it. But then Alana touching on that point in Cornwall, I think she, that was her identity crisis. I had an identity mm -hmm. crisis when I left the military. You know, what is my role? What is my purpose? Now I've left that environment. And Alana had then hit that same sort of T-junction. You know, what, you know, who am I? You know, is this me for the rest of my life? And the key, the key message from this, as Alan has touched on there, that, bottle, that two bottles of port, you know, I'd been away 21 days in a 365-day calendar, thinking that I needed to be out there, get, you know, providing money. And actually, Alana would, would provide for us all anyway. I didn't need to be going away. Yeah. And actually, it was just a lack of communication. Um, and then when we actually sat down yeah. and then put it all on the table, and then it, it, it then started to become a bit more clearer. Yeah, I remember I remember the words. He he said, um, "I said I don't want you going away." And he said, "I don't want to go away." And I was like, "I thought you wanted to go away." And he was like, "I thought you liked me going away." <laughs> so I was like, "Whoa, we're just having like because I I was just like I don't want to put the pressure on him by saying I don't want you going away, and he didn't want to put the pressure on me by saying I actually don't want to go away. So yeah. we just carried on doing what we weren't weren't happy with. And how crazy is that when you think about it? You know, you're two people, you, you love each other, you're together. That you, and, and it's the same problems, be it relationships or business. It is always communication. And even with the people that you're so close to, why can't those few words or sentence just trip out your mouth? I, you know, yeah. it's, it's silly. It is silly, yeah. And, and no, you're right. Communication is the, the, the key one. Um, I think just people are sometimes difficult, uh, find it, I don't know, I think for understanding me, each other yeah. as well. That that I see it often because I'm from Aberdeen in, in Scotland, um, it's a huge oil and gas network. So although I didn't have that military experience, I'd always seen the um, the you know, so the the, the, the guys will basically if anybody doesn't know oil and gas rotation, it's kind of a three, four, six weeks rotation where they'll mm. go away for six weeks or four weeks, come home for four weeks away for it. So you've got it's this curvature that kind of happens. So there's the, they leave, the woman's at home, adapts to life on their own, you know, gets into the flow. This is how we do things. This is how it happens. Daddy's coming home. We're exciting. Daddy's coming home. He comes home. It's a bit strange because he's kind of got fit into this place that he's not used to being in. Um, then he'll mess things up a bit. And then, then he'll want to do things. 
you know, mum will be like, well, I've had the kids for four weeks, you take them. He'll be like, well, I've been working for four weeks. And then there's this moment where we're all kind of settled and then it's back to let's prepare yeah. for them again. So it's this constant cycle. Um, but I always remember my granddad when he used to come home from offshore, he would come home, let's say he came home on the Wednesday. My grandma never actually saw him until the Friday because it was always just a given that when he got off the dock, he went straight to the pub. And in Aberdeen, pubs are open 24 hours to accommodate the pub. So he would go straight to the pub and be in the pub for probably 24 hours. And then from the Friday, he got family time. And that was that was kind of right. how we it. And that was like their kind of decompression, I guess, like coming up from the sea. So, um, but I see a lot of my friends who have got uh, husbands who work offshore, who are like, right, he's home. He has to have the kids. He has to do this. It's just like full pressure. And I'm like, guys, you do know he's been working while he's been away. He's actually not just been on a holiday. He's been doing... But so there's that little communication, well, uh, mass communication that's missing yeah. between them for her saying, actually, the kids have been stressful. The time you've been away has been stressful. And him saying, well, actually, I was doing 12-hour back-to-back shifts for seven days a week for the last four weeks. You know, somebody really got injured, whatever it might be. That, and they don't talk. And I think, sorry, I'm rambling, but mm. they, um, the, the times that I've heard Dean tell me that, um, and in fact, there was one, one that he said that his um, friend his friend's wife didn't want to hear anything about yeah. what he'd done. Right. In so none of them, she didn't like talking about military or guns or fighting or war or anything. So when he got home, he wasn't allowed to talk about the war, the, the work, anything, because she didn't like hearing it. And to me, I, it broke my heart. So I thought, how does he... Yeah. You know. And of- even if you can't understand it as a wife, just allowing that other... Or husband, allowing that other person to you know like you say decompress and you know I always remember my mum coming in when I was a little girl and she would she would always just need an hour just just yes. give mum an hour and and then you're fine and and I used to never quite understand it as a kid but I t- totally get it now yeah the, the, the amount of you know the amount of divorces from guys when they leave the military because their wives are used to not having them there and it's almost like <laughs> Who are you? You're disrup- disrupting our, our routine. Yeah. And probably, again, a lot of that, it's not because they don't love each other. It's probably just purely because of lack of, of communication. So, um, so that, that's probably the, the, the big message, the big message for us. But then once we realized actually that we, you know, I didn't need to be going away and, and things like that, it's, it was then, well, what, you know, identify what your strengths and weaknesses are. You know, I, I I do emails, but I don't like doing emails or proposals or stuff like that. I'm, I'm the, everyone who knows us, I'm the sociable one, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll, be the, I'll be the door opener, you know, I'm, I'm the one to, you know, I've got, I'm the one that chat to everyone as well. But then Alana's, Alana then knows that people used to sort of take, take the mickey, but like they take advantage of that. Yeah. And Alana would then just come in and be like, ah, here's the contract, here's this paperwork. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's almost a good cop, bad cop. And unfortunately, Alana was always the bad cop and I was the, uh, I was the, I was the good cop. But it, but it worked. <laughs> you know, it did work. But what were, what were the kind of the main things that you identified, Dean, that were your kind of weaknesses when it came to business that you just knew, you know what, I can't do this? Um, I, th- I think for me... Um, I, I don't like doing the paperwork and things like that. Mm. I can just bang out emails. And, you know, for me, I'm, I think I've got ADHD. I'm just like, ah, I'm so busy. Um, but it's, it's strange that, you know, things that stress me out wouldn't stress normal people out. You know, for me, you, you could drop bombs around me. There could be issues going on. And I'm just, I'll just walk calmly through. You know, you beep your horn at me. I mean, it's like a totally different, uh, you know, there's <laughs> certain things that stress me out, which wouldn't stress a normal person. Yeah. And it's probably because of lack of knowledge, because in the military, I'd never had to deal with, you know, contracts and, and, and things like that. That was dealt with by the, the military. You know, yeah. I got paid I got paid at the end of the month. You know, I always say that the military, like your mother and your father, they clove you, they feed you, they pay you on time. I didn't know what council tax ban I was paying. I didn't care. And to then have to know all that, you know, for, for the civilian community, you, you're used to that. As soon as you leave college, university, you're already in that. We don't have that. So we're having to sort of rewrite ourselves. Yeah. Completely. So, so for me, it was like, well, why take the stress on and doing that when Alana knows this inside out? You know what I mean? Let Alana, you know, d- deal with that. And then I can focus on the business development. Or, or But what about that angle of looking at it and going, do you know what, you know, you... you 
you go in young and so all of that stuff's done for you but what about that element of kind of saying actually some of this stuff is is kind of I should know it I, I do need to know it because because what if what if the worst happened and you know Alana won the lottery and pegged it and you're left with the house and the kids and whatever I mean it's that balance between actually recognizing that talent because I know a lot of my friends and couples will go but it's always down to me to do the admin and the sort in the school workout and the parties and the you know and then the, the other one gets to do all the kind of the fun stuff and I guess that's where a lot of that friction comes in yeah, yeah. and yeah. I, I've got friends on both sides so that some that the men do everything and some that the women do everything and again it's like as you said but what if and, and I think with Dean I think I think with Dean it was slightly different because there was so much to learn and I'm talking mm. about when I paid the electricity bill and that was paid and, he, and then I went to pay the gas, or, you know, so it's Scottish Hydroelectric, for example, who are gas and electric. And, and he would say, but you've already paid that. And, you know, I said, yeah, but we've got gas as well. And he says, well, it's like two separate things. And I'll be like, yeah, yeah, the, the house runs on like, you yeah. know, that, that you've got to pay a license to watch TV. That's like, what, what? You've got to pay like TV license. That's crazy. So um, I think that, I think, yes, you should absolutely stick to the... You can see Dean shaking his head. It's I can see there's someone behind her. They tell him to come in and say oh, hi. Can I have a snack? Always oh, while we have the podcast on. Oh, go and get a snack. Thank go and have some good. chocolate. Rhoda says you can have chocolate. It's on mute. <laughs> oh, damn. Um, <laughs> no, it's not. But like, it, depends how, it depends how busy your life is. Like For me and Dean, it just works. I mean, I've got everything written down. So if I did get a yeah. card tomorrow... There's things up there. There's, there's files in here that Dean could go in and just find everything he needs to, to find to find out. Um, but I think yeah, as Dean said, like so for example, even what you were saying about writing an email, I'll I'll you you'll see me all the time just working all night. That'll be how I'll I'll work. Um, and you know bang out like every email that needs to go out. And Dean says to me, he's like, I don't know how you do it because it takes me an hour to write one email. But <laughs> yeah. I just, I, I've been doing it all my business life. Now, yeah, now, not emails, but you know, emails came in. I think while yeah. I was in the banking world, but before that, you know, it was letters or however you had to do correspondence. And I, um, I always say to Dean, I was like, do the do the sandwich thing, as you just put what the subject is, you know. So whatever your the subject you've got to do, and I always have to do it because if I don't, I'll end up sending you this really blunt, horrible email. So, <laughs> And so I put the, put, the, put the subject in and then I'll go look at the email and then I'll go to the start of it and I'll be like, hi, how are you? How's things? How's great? And I hope everything's well with you. And then I'll come to the end of it and put, you know, can't, can't wait to see your look forward to seeing yeah. you soon or whatever it might be, just to give it that niceties. As if you get the bulk in, you can do do the rest. So it's, um, but whereas Dino maybe start at that start bit and try and get all the nice bit in or, I mean, that's just a, a tiny little example of, him, but if you if you put me on, you know, if apocalypse happened and the Trump supporters all came out and started attacking everybody now or whatever might happen, yeah, I wouldn't have a clue how to put that gun together or to to to, uh, you know, I could protect us. But no, she's pointing over there as if we've got a gun. I know. I'm now sitting there thinking, oh my god, <laughs> is that what the kids are playing with? <laughs> just, just turn the screen around. We've got an armory. No, we haven't. You know what I mean, so, <laughs> I, I, I think I think why for me it was it's, it's all about time management. You know what is why should I get stressed about doing this when actually yeah. if Alana can do it and do it in a fraction of the time that I can do, then my time is best spent business development and doing things that. And it's so efficiency, it, isn't it? It's efficiency, and that's what it is. You know, we talk about you know when when we've got a PA because Alana used to get really upset about just the nip naff and trivia when it was taking your time. So actually, yeah. it's almost like, well, no, let's get the PA in, and, and actually because then your time is focused on. You know where we can where we can earn money or where we can do good and and, and things like that. So that's yeah. that's where it was really. It wasn't because I didn't want to learn it. It was it's time management. You know I, I am efficiency. Yeah, you know, I, I can do an email. Everyone, just so your listeners know, I do. do <laughs> he that. has actually sent me an email or two. Yeah, so yeah, he, yeah, he absolutely yeah. can do Probably it. Probably typed it and just signed off as Dean. Uh, so. that's, but that's um, um, that's a good point. When we, yeah, come, yeah, mm. when we look at Alana, when we lost Francis was our PA and she was. She was my godsend, and, and De- she, she was Dean's PA, but she took away so much of the work that I would do yeah. for Dean that was just amazing. We, we lost her just pre-COVID, not lost her, she's still, she's still with us in the world, <laughs> but she's, um, 
she's <laughs> lucky enough to have her in a minute but she um she was just she's done all those and it's little you know what it's like I'm yeah. going to do a couple of jobs and then you'll go to do that one job and you'll log on you'll go what was the password for that so then you'll try and reset it and then the reset doesn't work and then what was meant to take five minutes <laughs> is now taking half an hour and then everything else is gone but but yeah back to that what Dean was saying there was how I used to do it back in the day was and I'm getting that and I'm changing a bit now, but um, I'm getting a bit more demanding. But it used to be that I would send you an email from Alana Stott and say, yeah. you know, X, Y, and Z, I require your proposal, or you know, we've done this evacuation plan, or we've done this, or we've done that. Zero response, nothing. I would get nothing back. So I'd be like, right, okay. So I'd log on again on Dean's, Dean's emails, because I would have his email, and do from Dean Stott. Like that, I would have a reply. Like that. And it was just... So I used to always do it and eventually I would end up just probably spend most of my day signing off as Dean Stott. So a lot of people yeah. have emails off of Dean have probably had it off of me. But now I get a bit more like, you haven't replied. I haven't had that reply. I still haven't had that reply. I started getting a bit more, no, you'll reply, you will reply to Alan Stott. I'm not going to go and be Dean Stott. You'll reply to Alan. That's sort of changed. That was about 10 years ago. Has, the mm-hmm. attitude has changed. That was more the male dominant security world and, and things like that. So, so yeah, well, that has changed. But I, I guess, it, I mean, I'd have been raging at that, but I guess that's why when the boss sends the email, you know, in a, in, in a in any company versus if you're just sending the email, the response is always going to be different. But so what what skills, um, Alana, did you kind of look at Dean and go, no, he needs to do that. This just I'm not good at this. Um, she's <laughs> Eh? I, tell you, I tell you what is actually really, really good. It's funny because I was speaking, and it's the same, what we were just saying there, the communication, the relationship is, because I was speaking to Pamela, who, who was on the yeah. other podcast with, um, and she was like having this hairy fit over this spreadsheet. And I'm, I'm, I'm some, I love numbers and I love spreadsheets. And I was like, pass them all to me, Pamela. You're going to remember that. <laughs> I, I don't it's a pitch. It's, it's, just pitch it's, it's then. weird. I just completely I get into like this little world of spreadsheets and I love it. But for Dean, um, I'm 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 quite an introvert, and which pe- people think I'm an ex- I'm absolutely introvert. Me and my own company is my favorite thing. So when I've got a meeting booked to do either a new business or to meet someone new, I do go a bit, you know, nervous. First time I met you, I'll be nervous. I'll be I will have that kind of horrible feeling. Mm. Um, so when the, the initial business meetings and things happen, I'm like, Dean, will you meet that person? Will you speak to that person? Because he he's a natural door opener and, and that, you know, his charisma with somebody will, will naturally pull that on. So how we'll normally do it now is Dean will do the first meetings, yes. find out the needs, find out the desires, and then be like, right, Alana, you know, you know, please be introduced to such and such. This is what they need. So and you're doing like 2% of the work then, Dean, and then yeah. Alana's kind of nailing the 98%. But without, but without that 2%, I wouldn't be able to do the next 90%. Exactly. And to, and to me, his 2% would be my 98% of stress because it's like, it's my biggest nerve thing. It's like, well, why do it if Dean could do it? Yeah. Without- exactly. Again, it's, it's an element there of the time management. There's no point in both going, I'll do it. I'll find out what the needs are, you know, what it is, um, you know, do the duty uh, intros and things like that. Um, and then communication, just come back, back brief to Alana, you know, this is it. And then straight, you know, I then do, do, do an email and I introduce Alana. Normally, all my emails are introductions. It is a <laughs> Yeah, nice to meet you. This is the boss, Alana. She'll take it from here, sort of thing. So, um, yeah, but it's, um, I think Alana, she said she's an introvert. I have noticed over the last you know, two or three years, she has be- become more confident. That's probably because, I don't know, maybe a personal thing. She didn't, you know, you just, uh, I think you are a bit more, obviously, since the challenge and things like that, she's had to. Yeah. She was always known as, you know, people would like to see the shadow. You know the shadow it's the shadow that's doing the work and it's like you know from the book i think the book and the the bike ride of you know highlighted to a lot of people actually you know that it wasn't just me it was alana and you know, we get we get emails to the website you know for me and actually some of them say having now read the book I, this is probably alana that's reading this you know what i mean so uh you know it, you yeah know, I'm aware of it and so it, do I you mean, reckon you could have done so when you started out on that cycle journey if you hadn't have had Alana or the fact that you, you, you know, you kind of communicate that, do you actually think you could have done it? 
physically I could have done it, but I, I wouldn't have been able to do it physically because the logistics wouldn't have, wouldn't have been smooth. Alana, literally, I, when I when I do a lot of my guest speaking, I generally and I generally believe this without sounding arrogant. I generally believe anyone can break a world record if all you've got to do is concentrate on the training. But someone behind you is running the business, looking after the kids, you know, paying the mortgage. And that's what Alana does. You know, I, everyone sees me on social media, which, which is great. But I think we talked about it before we came on, you know, for every special yeah. forces operator to get on the ground, boots on the ground, it takes seven other military personnel. People don't see the other seven. They just see the person doing the, the, the spear end of the work. And that's, and that's what it is in, in this relationship. Yeah. So the answer to your question is, I could do 14,000 miles on the static bike, but I wouldn't have been able to do the challenge without Alana because it's all the logistics. Whereas I, I see it as that I feel that he would, if you were to say, could Dean cycle from Ushuaia to Prudhoe Bay in under 100 days again by himself without you? I would say, yes, he would. He could pick up that bike at Ushuaia and he would find his way to Prudhoe Bay and he would get there as fast as he possibly could on his own. Mm. But... Could he have raised a million pounds? Yeah. Could he have had it publicized? Could he have looked after the kids? Could he have still had a home to come True. home to? All that kind of stuff. That's where that book comes from. So, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Oh my God. Yeah, but that's he, the, and actually that's a really interesting point, Dean, because that when you when you just said there, you said a bit like when you're in the military, all you had to focus on was the, the, the training and the job and the delivery that you needed to do. And the same in someone's career, if actually all you've got to do, because if you can be present and have purpose and focus on what you're doing, I believe anybody can do absolutely anything. Yeah. But the world we live in relies that if we have a partner, you know, do you have an equal split of when that person can, can go into a zone? Or is that one other person always the one juggling all that stuff? Yeah. And I think that's a really interesting... Do, do you ever find that frustrating a lot? Do you ever get annoyed that, Dean's allowed to maybe focus and, and you're doing all the other juggling. I don't want to cause a row on the podcast, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think it was so when Dean was injured in 2011, um, he he went into a bad place, obviously physically but mentally as well. Mm. It was a real torture for Dean because everything he'd ever known just completely left him and changed. So the kind of woman in me, I think we've all, women are our natural nurturers and nourishers and we, I immediately seen the person that I loved in pain and it was like, how do I fix him? What can I do? How can I make this better? How can I get his? So everything of my focus went straight into how to make Dean um, mm. happen with what, so it was get him into the workplace, you know, help him as much as we can and train and get his legs working again. Um, do all that and I just kept going and going. and before I knew it it was kind of six years later and I carried on that focus and now if I'd have friends and family who would say to me what about you Alana what about you but to me it was like this is me because he's my he is my world and he's my yeah but then yeah while he was on the ride there was points and I, I do remember one point when I was just like oh my god like I just can't and that's that's the point when I applied for for Mrs Roth because I just thought I'm just going to do something completely not at random. It's nothing like me. As I said, total introvert, total mm -hmm. somebody who doesn't want to do it. And I thought, I'm just going to put that application in and just see how it goes. Um, and that was that was the first point I went. And then I think since that point, it's kind of tumbleweeded into actually, no, like do more. But we've we've started to get, and I think you struggled to start with because you were like, well, where, where's Alana? I needed Francis. I, need, I just needed right. Where's Francis then? And actually, there. just to pick up on that, Alana, because you 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 entered this world. Was that right? Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Scotland. Mrs. Scotland. Mrs. Scotland. Scotland. And you you won it. Yeah, yeah. So we we won Mrs. World and went to Miss. Uh, so we won Mrs. Scotland and went to Mrs. World, um, which was I think was your first real taste of. Because I went, I had to go to Vegas for ten days for the Mrs. World contest. Ah, okay. Home with both the kids, pretty much having to run the businesses. Because I, I said, I, you know, I was pretty much going to leave the laptop on the side while I concentrated because it was rehearsals all day and everything. Yeah. Else. So Dean was pretty much running the the show by himself. But it was funny because I came home to a super clean house, no pending admin, no nothing because he was so determined to prove. Yeah. That, that 
to do it and that he was he was able to do it so it was, it was quite 700 emails in my inbox <laughs> was that was that just after your uh, personal assistant left and the cleaner left <laughs> yeah, everyone, yeah. Yeah, still have um, and of course, what goes on tour stays on tour in Vegas. So, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Unless you were with Mrs. England, who's got her phone out on a constant yeah. basis recording everything, you're like, oh, Do you not know the rules of Vegas? <laughs> Put that phone away. I think the, I think going back, sorry, just going back to the, cha uh, the challenges, I think obviously my passion is the physical stuff, it's, it's pushing, mm. pushing your body beyond limits. Alana's passion, or both of ours, but Alana's more so is the philanthropy side, the impact. So actually we make it work together. So it's it's benefiting both parties. So for me is right, prove the world wrong. Um, you know, and I like to, to train and Alana's like, right, you know, where can we, where's the impact? What can we do? And I, I think that's what keeps, that's what sort of makes it work with the challenges. Cause Alana's like, if it, all she's doing trying to promote me to see how fit I was, it doesn't, it doesn't bode well. If, if she's, but she's promoting do. challenges, camp, uh, um, awareness of We you know, do it well together. And I think that we've both got our strengths and our weaknesses in each area. But I think, so where Dean likes to prove the world wrong and he likes to show that he can do it and he likes to, and he likes to verbalise that quite a bit. And I'll, you know, I think, um, can I, if I can mention it, but yesterday Megan had a fantastic ruling from, from yeah. the Sunday. And Dean's immediate reaction was that he wanted to go and just be like yes you want you know really put it out there whereas mine is almost like this little smug grin that i just go you know good good one kind of thing yeah. so he's got that whereas when it comes to the philanthropy side of it um dean equally so i i like to win as well i just do it in a quieter way dean likes to do the philanthropy but if, i didn't see it yesterday in the shop there was somebody behind us in the in the you know you could see that they, they had they were they put they had in their shopping basket they'd obviously thrown together and they were trying to just yeah survive day by day yeah. it. and we kind of just looked at each other and we were i was packing our bags we were looking at them kind of putting their thing on i could see that it was you know you could see what kind of situation yeah. you just were. knew yeah and we just neither of us actually said anything to each other and i just looked at him and i just kind of nodded and he kind of nodded and just said to the teller can you just pay for their their shopping and it wasn't it, it was just, and then we walked out the shop and we didn't speak about it again. So it's yeah. just, we do both have the same passions and desires and wants to do things. We just, we do it in very, very different ways. Yeah. And I think actually maybe the whole COVID thing has kind of pushed a lot more of this to couples because more couples are now, um, you were kind of in a way forced into that situation through, through, your, through your accident, Dean. But I think, you know, Nick and I have said to each other a couple of times actually, we we've been all right you know everyone kind of goes oh my god you know Rona will end up burying Nick or poor Nick <laughs> you know I, I tend to get it in the this end it's like oh you know Rona's a bit of a nut job poor husband but actually you know what and every time we've been locked down we've just got on so well and you know that being able to think along the same lines and whereas I'm the gobby one you know Nick is a lot more introvert but he's a deep thinker and um but just as you know just as stubborn like if, if he wants to spend eight weeks arguing with somebody over his rights he will absolutely do that whereas I'd be like oh whatever just yeah you know move on but so you know like when you started to write when did you first say to yourself I'm going to write a book and and how did your teamwork and kind of did you just do that on your own or what's how's that worked no, so was it when when we came back, you know, we did the bike ride. So, uh, you know, so I had something to focus on, you know, Al you know, Alana didn't want me moping around the office. Um, so we, did, we didn't look at it because it's successful. We, did, we didn't look beyond it. We didn't see it as a career in guest speaking, future challenges mm. and, and things like that. So we didn't even think about a book. Um, it was only then we got introduced to the Blair Partnership and yeah. sat down for an hour with them and they said, yeah, this is a book. So it wasn't something we'd, we'd thought about. Um, f again, for me, you know, I struggled to write, I struggled to do an email. So for me to do a book, yeah, you know, you're, you're asking big things. You know, Alana, she's quite happily, you know, halfway through her book and she, she's doing it herself. <laughs> so I'm like, so we, we, we got a, um, we, 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 we thankfully got a decent ghostwriter. It was a military guy, someone who, who mm. under, understood us. Um, but no, it wasn't, a plan when we set up on the bike ride. But then it did work quite well because I mean, Jez, who's Dean's ghostwriter, who's amazing, who done, who literally, you know, it's like every word that is in there is Dean's words. It's just written down by yeah. 
by him, but they would also, so they would, I think they used to do was like once a week or once a... No, every day. So once we got the, once we got the deal, we would just, he would call me, you know, a bit like yeah. a Zoom. He'd have his record and, and, you know, let's start at the beginning. Tell me about your childhood. You know, and we and we go through and he just type it up. You know, you finish the book in two months. You know, wow. like got, yeah. Often I would just come and sit in with him and then while he was speaking and he's speaking to Jed, I would be all but remember such and yeah. such and remember so like we would just add little bits in that maybe got maybe got forgotten. Mm. Um and, and also give the story more more, I guess more power and emotion because whilst you're going through that experience as 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 the author, there is like you say, seven other people behind or a family behind that's either going through that with you or, you know, experience a lot of what you're doing. Yeah. And that's what I'll do when I pull my, because I'm trying to write my own one because I, I do see myself as a bit of a writer and um, I, I don't want to get a ghostwriter. I want to do it myself. It's just time. But I'll pull Dean in when it's the right time and be like, read it. And I bet you any moment that he'll, he'll be like, but what about them? But what about them? Remember that? Because there's yeah. so much can't remember yourself so that again it'll be teamwork on that did you find it quite therapeutic because you know when you started there by saying he came in and goes right tell me about your childhood and what you did actually not many of us go back to reflect and one of the things I've noticed when I um, introduce people on the podcast they go oh oh my god is that is that all me did you find that really therapeutic I I did actually and and I found it very beautiful, but also it was my opportunity to tell my story because people just see you as the special forces guy who's just broken the world record. And in fact, yeah, that's the last bit. There's the whole, how did I get to this point? You know, my dad yeah. told me the last two minutes in the military, I was five foot seven and nine and a half stone. I wasn't the person I was today. So it was nice to get that part of the story out. And it also, for me, a lot of my military friends would be reading the book, but they don't know me pre-military either so they were learning stuff yeah. about me. and the great thing about jez for me is you know i'm very i'm very when it comes to detail it has to be perfect so i'm talking i'm i'm trying to write the book as if one of my friends is reading it. he's that no, majority of no, these no. readers don't even care about that and let's keep flowing through and and, and, that, and that was good as well because a lot of people read the book said it flows really really well and and, and that's good yeah. having a third party set of eyes looking at it and actually, that's key when it comes to teamwork, isn't it? It's actually being aware of who you are as individuals and what, what you're good at, but also recognising that when you're so deep into something, it, it you know, those eureka moments often come from a, an overheard conversation or someone listening in and saying, oh, did, did, let me just play that back. Have you thought about that? Yeah, true, yeah. But I think the, um, you know, when, when you see, especially in the world we live in today with this Instagram and um all the, you know, you see this perfectness out there. Everything's just perfect. And you hear it a lot from entrepreneurs. You hear a lot from the, it's, it's, a, it's about that story. And I was speaking to a woman the other day who was saying that, you know, to, to look at somebody, you're like, oh, you know, Ron, you've got this podcast, you're doing fine. Or, you know, Dean, you're the special forces double world record holder. You know, you've got, you know, Alana, you're living out in California. You know, you've got all the luck in the world. It's the, nobody sees that journey. Nobody sees that that battle, the sleepless nights, the effort that went in, the tears, the blood, the sweat, everything that goes into it. And not only do they not see it, are they willing to do it to get there? If that's, if you're saying that this yeah. is what you want and this is what you want to get, as you've just said, nothing's impossible. Anything is possible, but you have to put that work in and it is not easy. And it's the same as a marriage. It's not, mm. it's not an easy thing to be- Don't like, raise your eyebrows, T. <laughs> A little cheeky, yeah. Really? <laughs> um, I mean, my ninety-five-year-old auntie who passed away last year. She was, she my, you know, she was my everything, my inspiration. But she was single her entire life, and I think that was part of it. And she was always, she was always advocate marriage. She was always advocate yeah. working in the marriage. And you know, if something goes wrong, to 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 deal with it and to work through it and um, not give up. But I think that's why she decided to stay single because she was like, well, I'm actually not willing to do that compromise. I'm going to do my... Well, the agony, <laughs> and she was listening to everyone else's stories is that. Yeah, oh, yeah, loving it. Just because, you know, we often joke with our kids. In fact, literally earlier on today and, and uh, Liv was like, oh, what what did you have kids for then? What's the point? And we're like, me and literally looked at each other at the same time and went, yeah, we literally ask ourselves that every day. I like, don't, actually don't have a clue. And... <laughs> And it is. And I think sometimes you, you, I get to the end of the day and I, 
I, I can't even remember nine o'clock in the morning because I flitted between WhatsApp and Instagram and groups and networking and clients and podcasting and the kids. And you're like, it's so true what you say. People have a perception and a picture that, you know, you're confident, you're loud, you're absolutely fine. And, you know, deep down, you're not, you're tired, you're upset, you're paranoid, you're, you're delicate. And I think often showing that rarity um, is just as important. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody is. I don't care. I mean, I probably, I'm married to probably one of the most stoic, toughest, strongest men in the world like I, that I've ever met anyway. I've met a lot of people. And, and that includes like The Rock, all these kind of people. He is that kind of, that everything. You met The Rock? Got, no, oh. I, I haven't met him yet, but um, <laughs> I would say that they've got, they, that he, Dean has his moment. There's not a person in the world who hasn't got that moment where they're like, I can't do it. I don't know what to do. I'm struggling. I need to cry. I need to do something. I need to punch something. Dean's m- mostly punches something, but it's, um, and yeah. Um, yeah it's, but, now, you're um, not trying to tell me something here, are you? No, uh, yeah, it's, it's a sign. Because uh, <laughs> I can help. <laughs> Could you imagine that? Uh, In fact, we actually used to do some. I know the sign for me, do it's me on the receiving end. We used to do this because um, yeah. we done comp- comp- combat training together, like combat training and things on the bodyguarding course. We used to have a thing when we were young, free and single, we were able to go out, and we had this. Um, this is a bit of a like a bit of an exclusive for you, but we <laughs> we used to come home from a night out, and it, we would have a fight to see who could get undressed the quickest. But it was a battle. So we were trying to stop each other doing it to see who would win this battle, and it became this all-out war. And if anybody had seen it, <laughs> police about it. It was, it was just, but it was that's the kind of crazy thing that we would be. Well, if it makes you feel any better, my husband and I, in the very early years, we would often just like just look at each other on the sofa and just go. I really want to fucking punch you. And we would go outside and just have, I mean, he wouldn't hit me full on because he'd knock me out, but we would. We'd literally just go and have a punch up, then start laughing and then just go back inside. Yeah. We don't do it anymore because I really would deck him if he did. But um... <laughs> we, have, we have a punch bag now for that. So, yeah, yeah no, it's easier. Like I say, you know, Lana, she's learned a lot of the, the pressure points, but I haven't taught her all the tricks. She never. That's the one key thing. Don't teach him all the tricks. Same with Tommy, my, my four-year-old, honestly. He's going to be he, better. He's, already, he's yeah. already getting the better of me, so I haven't taught him everything yet. Um, oh, and, and you know what? With children, the very joy is they, they teach you something every day, and if anyone's going to have one over on you every day, it absolutely yeah, is your children. I've seen Tommy give Dean a couple of right hooks, and Dean just stay, you know, just completely non-emotional, but I can see the pain. I can see the pain is coming through, and I'm thinking... Yeah, that hurt you, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, <laughs> oh, oh, honestly, I feel, I feel like we've talked about, like, um, potentially... No, we're not ne- domestic violence. Naked violence, um, domestic violence. Oh, yeah. um, not, not sure what's going on now. Um, but equally, in your in your book, do you... Because I, I, I was saying earlier, one of the things I really respected about you, Dee, was when we first spoke, you always actually spoke about Alana yeah. and, when, and, we, and, and talked about... Um, you know the kind of this team and who was behind it and and how you can do it without her and and I think that that meant a lot for for me do you talk about that in the book in terms of you know the the rela- how do you bring that to life and and is is Alana in the story Alana is very much in in the story obviously when Alana enters my life we've got the bit you know as a child and, yeah. and then the military and Alana Alana is in there and you know I see other people I see other like um, celebrities and I know them and I know the f- I know who's running that team and it's not them yeah. and it's like and I think it's unfair really because they're getting the limelight and the praise and it's like well no there is that support network around you and for me you know, it was an opportunity in the book you know to say to obviously highlight that as well because it also for others as well listening you know they then maybe take some take something from yeah. that and realize actually yeah I can't do this on my own maybe if I do speak to my wife and, and, and things like that um so for me it was also a thank you as well to Alana you know for what, for what she'd done and, and if I could do that through a book you know because I'm not the best communicator uh, so um you can also do, 
jewelry just everywhere jewelry yeah, yeah. yeah. oh now that's a good one we could go on to that one i know a really amazing jeweler alana so oh, i'm really happily... really changed the topic I'll, uh, yeah we're right on we're right on topic now so uh, I'll, I'll send that over to you not a, not, not a problem but, um... but no, it, I, I, I think it was it was mm. alana was there and, and people who do read the book then realize actually this isn't an individual this is a, a couple and actually, when we say couple, it's actually a family because we're very lucky to have two children that we have who, you know, my son, he was two, when he finished the challenge, he was two and a half years old. All he'd ever known was me cycling because that's yeah. his whole life. You know, my daughter, you know, I sort of joke, actually, my, my daughter, you know, when I used to tell her I was in the military, she's like, oh, you, you weren't in the military. She thinks I'm the Walter Mitty. You know what I mean? But, <laughs> but with them, they, they come everywhere. They fly, you know, Alana yeah. had to leave them in UK with her granddad while I was on the bike ride. So Alana could move the vehicles from Fort Lauderdale down to Panama. You know, for them, other kids may not have been able to do that. I mean, fly to Alaska to meet dad. They just look up to us, you know, as long as mum or dad are there or granddad, then we'll just, we'll just follow. And we're, we're yeah. lucky in that. So it's the power couple, but very fortunate to have have children and they can... are amazing kids. I think mm. as well that we, you know, we, we are blessed. They've been brought, Molly was literally on, as soon as Molly was born, she was, you know, we, we were taking her to security shows, you know, she was just a tiny little toot. Like, Singapore Yacht like, Show, Singapore you know, Yacht Australia, it's just um, everywhere with us. And they were on, the, and they both, and they'll get on a plane, they'll sit down, they'll lock it. <laughs> Molly, they, they pick up, Tommy does the thing, he picks up the, the card, you know, and reads all the instructions. Yeah. And what to do and that, put it down. They'll sit there, I'll know when he's, oh, sorry. Sorry. That's all right, go get the phone. The domestic violence helpline. <laughs> Yeah, this is going out live. It's not just recorded. Um, the, um, the, yeah, she would get on the plane. She would do that. She, she knows, but while, while the theme was on the challenge, it was a, um, it was a 20, 24 hour job because we were running the work back home. Um, and then Dean, due to the time difference of where Dean was, I was having to sit up all night and wait for Dean to kind of check in and where he was. So yeah. we were on constant rotation. And Tommy was just just the two. So Tommy was in my belly when we decided to start planning this, and then so he was born straight yeah. into it. Um, and then, but Molly, so Molly was five, and she would. So Mummy had been up all night, you know, doing stuff with with Dad, and then it would be. Um, seven in the morning Tommy would wake up she would quietly get up and go and get him his breakfast or or she would Aww. change his nappy or she would do it. she was six years old you know six and a half seven years old she would change his nappy she would do all this stuff to make sure that that, that we would get our space or she felt and she and she does everything to help us mm. she, right now she's cleaning the house she wants money for it but that's but that's amazing the fact that she she a it's helping but b she's recognized that actually I want something, but I know I've got to do something first. Yeah. And actually, the skills that your kids are going to grow up with, with that you know, ability to travel and just what, what your kids will see as normal, some kids will never see in their lifetime, unfor you know, unfortunately. And I think it's, you know, I do wonder what our children in 10 years' time, when we look back and ask them and say, you know, what did you think of Mummy and Daddy and, you know, Mummy's podcasting or you doing your challenges? It's it's going to be really, really interesting to see how we've impacted their lives. Just wait, but wait till the day you have to interview your child. That's going to be quite a funny one. Oh, well, do you know what? My, my eldest actually does want, well, they both do want to come on. So I did say, well, let's do it. Let's let's do a, you know, the morels in lockdown and give it a go. Um, so I think my eldest is going to come on and um, I think we might just do it. I think it would be a really nice bonding session as well. Um, well, listen, before you go, have you, is, is the book out in America? Because obviously you guys are over there now. Yeah, so the book's out in the UK anyway, so anyone yeah. can get it there. So the plan is, is to then... Uh, is to launch it here in the US. Um, they, have, they did have a launch date, which is, keeps getting put back because of COVID. So we're not going to say that it's out on X day because it was meant to be out on X day and then it's been pushed back right. and all this kind of thing. So right now we're working at trying to get it printed here instead because it just might be logistically um, things, we don't know how, how soon things are going to change. And, and there is a really high demand for the book here. So. Great. Uh, you, they can get it on Amazon here, but it's going to have to get shipped in from somewhere else. So um, yeah. we, we do definitely need to do a print run here. So that's kind of what we're working on at the minute. But yeah, it's it, it's it's available anywhere if you're willing to wait for 
a couple of days. But in the UK, yeah, Amazon, 24 hours, and you'll be reading it. Good old Prime. Kindle and Audible, is, you can download it straight away, so you, you can get on that. But, um, but yeah, when you have a publisher telling you using COVID as an excuse for shipping books, and then... You're telling that to an ex-SAS man. <laughs> really? Well, uh, my response was, I actually managed, we managed to move ourselves, our family and our livelihood over during COVID. <laughs> so, you know, a few thousand books is a poor excuse. I think, I think you got it. No, I, exactly. Well, listen, it's been awesome speaking to you both. I think maybe next time we go one better, I'll bring in Nick as well and we'll just, um, make, maybe no kind of weird fighting stuff going on. But um, <laughs> no, listen, thank you so much for your time. Dean, it's amazing to see you uh, again. And, you know, one day I'm sure we'll all meet face to face at some point. But Alana, obviously, thank you for coming on. It's, it's really insightful and it, it's great to be raw and honest about, you know, a, a partnership and your strengths and weaknesses and, and stuff. So I wish you the best of luck with the book launch. And Alana, next week's podcast, we'll be hearing loads more about the incredible woman that you are in your own right. So thank you so much and have an awesome day. Thank you, thank you very Enjoy much. Enjoy your wine. Enjoy your weekend. Have a great day. I will. Bye. So that's it. You've made it. The show's over. Thank you for being with us. I hope you've been able to take something away, maybe solve a problem or just know you're not alone. Here's hoping it made you smile with a few laughs along the way. Please feel free to find me on all social media channels and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just search the Rona Morale podcast. Have an awesome day and see you next time.